All right. Hello, everybody. This is Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. I'm so excited to have you here today with us because we have a great show for you. We have a returning guest, and, uh, and uh, people say he's better looking than me, but we don't have to make the, the judgment <laughs> on that. But uh, we have Alan Seinfeld in the house. He is a host and producer of New Realities, the popular cable and YouTube channel with over 18 million 18 views. 18 million views, yeah. Alan, I'm, I'm jealous be- here. I'm going to have to find out more information. How I'll do talk. you do that? I'll talk. Um, uh, but uh, he's going to be at the Conscious Life Expo this coming weekend, and we hope you get out and visit him. But uh, he is the uh, program. He the program he uh, investigates new ways of looking for, at UFOs, conscious science, and the arts. He is a writer, producer, speaker in the fields of human potential. We need that more now than ever. Uh, and uh, metaphysics, conscious el- uh, evolution, and healing, and the list goes on and on. So please welcome Alan. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I usually do this, a little applause. I know it's a cheesy Hollywood thing, but uh, welcome, Truth Be Told. It's good to be in Hollywood with the cheesy stuff. That's right. So, so tell us, your, I mean, you're here in town for the Conscious Life Expo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first of all, tell us what you're going to be talking about uh, this coming weekend. Well, at this expo, Friday at 6 p.m., I'm partnering with Dr. J.J. Hurtock and his wife, Desiree Hurtock. We just interviewed those uh, two yesterday. Oh, you did? Amazing. Well, they are good friends of mine, and we've been on the road going from conference to conference talking right. about the wave of ascension, the wave of transformation mm-hmm. that seems to be happening on this planet, this acceleration. Of course, when you're accelerating like that, all the junk, all the right. garbage comes up to be cleaned and filtered and to get rid of so we can really move to a real place, a real sense of human potential, who we really are, who we were meant to be as human beings, which is not suffering. We're here to live in joy. But how how did we come to that determination? Because I've heard... You know, we before we come here, we choose our destiny, and some of the suffering is there for a reason. We have yeah, so for a soul's evolution, right? You know, we choose some of that suffering, if you want to call it right. that, because it's here on this earth plane, this material plane, that we learn the lessons of the soul. Because right. one, the body is a very dense vehicle to work in, and it and it, and it pushes you mm-hmm. to evolve, to to be at peace with it, to to make allowances for other personalities, to be challenged. Right. And if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. That sounds like New York. That's it. That's why I live in New York, because if you can do it there, you can do it anywhere. But really, but overall, if you can come to that place of peace in yourselves and look at everyone and say, Mm -hmm. I've experienced that, I can allow that, I can be at peace with that, then you come into a place of of joy in yourself and, and understanding. And you've then conquered, in a sense, the human dimension. It's not easy. Right. And I, but it's simple. <laughs> and I, why, why do you think some people come to, into this world? Um, it seems, by our visual vi- visualization of other people, it seems easier for some than others. Mm. Why, why you, is that? Because yeah. some people have a different soul destiny. You know, your soul is a recorder of your emotion, and some people just choose to be have a more challenging time because mm-hmm. that that for them is fun or that's their that's their karmic destiny or right. that's what you know on another level it's all fine right. it's all okay it's just how much do we want to engage within this 3D world <laughs> and um, we have to look at it from the observer the witness point of view right as well as the one in the plane, in the mm. place, that one that's here acting it out. So we're really who we are is the consciousness outside of this experience. But we also have to engage in this experience. So it's a kind of double-edged sword. Does that make sense? No, it does. So it does. people have lots of issues in their lives, and that's okay. That's what they chose to engage in. And the idea is we can look at it and not be caught up in it. That's the mm. challenge, I think, you know, yeah. and um, to make peace with it all. Now, your your website, uh, New Realities, mm-hmm. um, tell, tell me about what is a new reality? Mm-hmm. Uh, do we create our new reality? It's, but if we predetermine what, how our life was going to be, how, do we, how, do, how does that also uh, combine with free will? Yeah, I don't think we only predetermine how our life is going to be. I think you don't think we are. 
I think it's half that, and I think we're also here to make known the unknown. That's what the teachings that I um, kind of were initiated into, which right. means we're here to be the artist, the creator. So new realities, I asked one of these experts at this uh, expo, I said, because everyone's talking about how much they, they know and all right. this and that. I said, tell me something you don't know. And this guy was just stunned. He had nothing to say. He, really? He didn't know what he doesn't know. So that's, <laughs> that's the idea. A lot of people know a lot of stuff, but that's only a small sliver of what can be known. Right. So the new realities that I am looking for is what is unknown? What mm -hmm. have we yet to know? What have we yet to cognize in reality? Does that make sense? Right, so it right. comes down to perspective right. and perception. So do you know the difference between cognition and recognition? Right. Mm -hmm. What is, I'm asking you, Tony. No, so <laughs> cognition, I mean, rec recognition is something that we, I, I, I feel, and I could be wrong, I was a C student, so. Oh, it's okay, it's, no, there's no right answer. Right, but, but I, I mean, for recognition is something that we determine as we uh, um, understand uh, through experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what recognition is. So we had to have the experience. But cognition or, or recognition means to recognize something. Uh, okay, got so it. So the cognition part is the perception of a reality, a right. new reality. So uh, someone had to teach me this was a table, that was a microphone, right. that's a camera. But I didn't know. I had to cognize that. So when we're facing the unknown, right. we can't recognize it. We have to open up another part of our brain that allows something new to right. come into our field of reality. And how does that help us spiritually? Not necessarily as a human being, mm -hmm. but as a spiritual being. Because as a spiritual being, what we really incarnated for is not for all those lessons, is to make known the unknown, to be creators, to right. be inventors. To, you're here, and this might be your gift to the world, right. to shine your creative talent and bring something right. new into this world because that's your highest excitement, if you want to quote Bashar. <laughs> That's your highest excitement, to be the creators of whatever reality you, you have. So you right. maybe you're a singer or a dancer. If that's it, that's your gift to the world. That's the real reason you've incarnated, not for all these lessons. They come along with being the creators mm. of reality. But the true task of the incarnational experience is to express, to express the joy of being. And because you do that, other people can be ignited to feel something. Right. So we're here, I call it now a time where that we call, I call it the flowering of humanity, mm -hmm. where we can bring an upliftment where everyone can experience something new and feel more, more to the reality. So that's, that's all there is to being spiritual, is a task of feeling. What do you think it means to be spiritual? Well, I mean, that can mean anything for a lot <laughs> of people. It doesn't mean anything yeah. to anybody yeah, until you define exactly, it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That could be a complete different definition from anybody you ask. Right. And that's a problem. Everyone's saying about being spiritual, but we're here to live. Right. We're here to embody creation. That's the best and most spiritual you can be. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what, I made it a joke when my, when my mother, because for the last 30 years, my mom just, her health was... Not great. Mm -hmm. I mean, her, you know, cancers and, you know, circulation and blood pressure. And, and I always made a joke to her. I said, when it's your time, Mom, I said, when you get to heaven, take your receipt to the customer service counter and said, I want my money back because this body was not blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, she already got. She always got That's a joke. Funny. She always got a joke out of it. That's funny. And I, but I think sometimes as human beings, what I've even learned through the hardest times, I've I've found my biggest strengths. Right. And so, can you tell our audience so that's listening today? Who, what is some of the biggest strengths that you found with your own mm -hmm. journey that enhanced you to where you got to where you are today to be a light for other people? Well, thank you. You know, it's it's a daily experience to start to be open to new realities. Like, right. So one of the biggest things was I uh, graduated college as a psychology major. Oh, there you go. All right. 
And because I wanted to know about the human experience, I wanted to right. learn. And then someone gave me this tape on channeling and, you know, uh, how this 35,000 year old warrior would come through this housewife <laughs> from Washington right. State. I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing in the world. And because it didn't fit into my psychological paradigm. Right. I mean, obviously, the woman is crazy or acting or, um, you know, just putting on a show. And then I listened to the tape. And the tape was about love. And the tape was about possibilities and opening. And the best thing on that tape was the mystery is not what's coming through this, that woman. It's right. what's what's coming through that body. What are you right. channeling? What's the essence of that personality that's mm -hmm. giving voice to this body. And so I had to decide, was there something more than psychology? Mm. Was there a greater paradigm? And when I let go of that psychological box and open up to the possibility that there could be non-local consciousness, that was a spiritual breakthrough. That mm. was a challenge to let go of, you know, 20 years of how I cognized the world to see there was something else. And when that opened up, I became a mystic. Mm. I, I met this being, this channeling, and I had this, like, altered state consciousness experience, and then I knew I was more than my body. I had the awareness, and that really opened up a whole new doorway to the whole thing that we're going to be seeing at the Conscious Life, Life Expo. Expo. I wouldn't have been ready for it if I kept everything within a psychological framework because there was just no room for anything else. So the mm. challenge is to keep opening to possibilities. And I hear things from people that I say, that I just don't buy that. <laughs> and then I make a little room right. for considering the possibility that maybe there is something more. So at this talk I'm doing tomorrow with the Her Talks is about ancient civilizations and this keys to ascension. Mm -hmm. And so ancient civilizations weren't about cavemen living in this right. primitive dwellings. They were pretty pretty advanced. Well, we can't even figure out how to build the pyramid now, the Great Pyramid in Egypt. We right. don't know. They tried to do this. It was this Chinese technology company that tried to put those blocks together. They couldn't do it. So there's... The ancients laid the groundwork for the coming of a civilization that we're approaching now. How do we become spiritual beings and start to raise the vibration of our bodies? And it is, it's coded in these ancient monuments. Like, well, let me ask you yeah. this. And it, you would think in 2019, and these are, this was thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. why do we feel like we've stepped back spiritually? Because... A lot of these were very connected to the gods, mm -hmm. very connected to themselves, through even more advanced seems for the mm -hmm. for the era technology wise. Why do we feel like we've stepped back in in existence of spirituality and connections to the other side? That's a good question because, and I, my answer, and it may not be in agreement, right. is that there are waves of souls incarnating. So those people who laid down the grids for the ancient civilization. Right ascended their bodies already, but left a uh, marker in stone so future generations, the next wave of incarnations, right. which we are, would come in and have a pathway, have directions, a map mm. towards raising that frequency within these stone structures right. that the great ones left behind. So they're off on another adventure, those beings that <laughs> use that technology. We need you back. <laughs> well, no, they left us a map if we yeah. just listen. So there's waves of incarnation. We didn't step back. We haven't, you know, like someone graduates from high school right. and you say, well, why aren't we graduating? Because we're not ready. ready but now yet. we're coming. As we discover the ancient technologies, our grade is going to graduate, hopefully, some <laughs> of us. Or maybe we'll be left back. But, right. you know... Well. But, I won't tell you how many times that I was a senior. No, I'm okay. kidding. I'm kidding. But that's <laughs> the gift of these great monuments, these great um, stone structures, the great uh, works of the ancient mystics right. is to point a direction so we can graduate and we're getting help from the earth because the right. frequency is increasing. So, you know, there are waves and there's waves of this increase of evolution. So we're the next wave, Tony. It's about dang time. There you go. And Wake oh, up. <laughs> so uh, also, why do you think there are so many gods? I mean, gods, gods, there's angels. There, there's, you would think there's, there's one creator. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just throwing yeah, this yeah, out. Sure. You know, we, we, there's one creator. Why does he need 
angels and and beings and or uh, so well, many things to approach us. Why can't it just be one voice? Or well, is it one voice? Why do you? Th- or, well, it's how you're defining when you say he. I think you've he, already she, lost it. Yeah, the oneness is the oneness of consciousness. Mm-hmm. When you close your eyes in a deep meditation, or I close my eyes, we reach the place of the observer. Right. That's consciousness. That's God. That silence behind your eyes is the oneness. You're mm-hmm. there. That's God, if you want to call it a name. I mean, God has gotten a, you know, a strange uh, meaning these days because mm-hmm. so many people have their own definition. But what I call God is the oneness of consciousness. Consciousness is singular. My consciousness, your consciousness shows up differently, but it's, it's a singularity. So what you're calling angels and extraterrestrials, those are frequencies within the totality of creation. Right. The totality is God. Within that, each being is emanating its own frequency vibration. So there are beings that are angelic or there are extraterrestrials that are a whole other frequency. But it's all part of the oneness because, in essence, when they tune into that center, that's God inside Mm -hmm. who they are. Does that make sense to you? No, it makes sense. I just just always thought it was funny that every civilization... You know, we had multiple gods, and even in Christianity, it's one God, but there's also you know the archangels and the, and it, mm-hmm. the list goes on and on and on. And I I just thought, it, you know, wh- whoever created the universe, mm-hmm. he she all of us all consciousness perfect. itself created the universe. When you say me you, that's not first of all that's not who we are. Right, you, who, your personality is like the, a, the, the 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 meat suit is me. Yeah, the meat suit and the personality is not you, who you are either, right. Tony. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> you think oh, you're God, Tony... That's all I thought I had. No, no, no it's not all you had. There's more to <laughs> you, kidding. but it's the personality yeah. is like a piece of clothing, too, that yeah. you wear for the incarnational experience here. Right. But it's not as much you, even as your body. You know, it's, it's also a fabrication. Hmm. So it's like... There's like you have a radio, let's call that God, but all the different stations on there are part of the aspects of creation. Right. But the the the, the frequencies are one, you know? Right. So does that No, make that sense? makes total sense. So we're yeah. here to vibe at different frequencies and vibrations to go back to that great being which is the oneness. Now can one, let's say like your frequency Sure. It can affect my frequency in a positive way and maybe even a negative way. Yeah, possibly. So uh, let's go back and not to ancient civilizations, just even just 50 years ago, Hitler. Okay. (laughs) That, I know, right? Not a very high vibration. Not of a high vibration, but why do you think somebody of that vibration affected so many people and how he got to that power? I'm, I'm I'm not asking just about him, but there's been many people of that vibration has have ascended to power. Right. Well, I think we are incarnated to, to be challenged, to overcome those challenges. Okay. I mean, I think in my past life, I think I was in a concentration camp mm-hmm. as one of those people that wow. wasn't a picnic. It wasn't a pleasant experience, but it, through that lesson, through that understanding, right. I kind of gained more awareness and more forgiveness and more um, expansion in the possibilities of what it is to exist here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm just, you know, it's with the visions that come to me, some of the nightmares I had. But, you know, it's all okay because here we are now. And if you can look at it all from the observer point of view, you realize that who we are is greater than those Mm -hmm. experiences. And how how can we as people what we do? And like I said, you're. Yeah. I feel like I I'm just a, a messenger for you gentlemen, and uh-huh. we'll have another guest here in a second. Uh, uh, that I'm here to help spread your message. That's right. That's your work. That's right. your creativity. That's your joy. Right. But how do we how do we help other than just l- ho- hopefully roll the dice and it helps someone for the people that are struggling with their own awakening awakening? Right. How can we help enhance them as the beings we are, other than just telling what we think? Well, I mean, I think... Is it through thought, through prayer, through all the above? Through prayer, through exercise, through meditation, yeah. through, uh, you know, visioning how you want to create your life by letting go of limitations. Right. I mean, 
in a way, it is just through talking. I mean, there's great teachers out there. Joe Dispenza is giving right. techniques and technology. I just like to tell people the the universe is stranger and more interesting and more wonderful than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. And to look at the world from what we don't know for welcoming the unknown. Most right. people are afraid of the unknown, but that's just oh. because of what they know. Yeah. What we don't know is much more wonderful and exciting than what we do know. If we could step into that in freedom, then we create the new realities. Mm. Then we create the hope and the joy and the possibility that something more can exist for that person who may be listening and is depressed. I mean, right. it's a challenge for all the people at the expo to lift those people up. Mm. First, they have to want to. Mm -hmm. First, they have to see that their old state of mind is not getting them anywhere. Right. That it's like, it's stuck in a neural net of addiction. You know, when people are depressed, that's actually a chemical in their body. Mm -hmm. And when they stop feeling depressed, they'll start to look for something to feel depressed about <laughs> because they're addicted to I the chemical. Yeah. No, because they're addicted <laughs> to those chemicals. So what happens is you have to resist the body's cravings or the unconscious drive for those old realities and start to just step away and decide to create something new. Smile in the mirror. You know, Bashar has a great, I love Bashar, and he's coming to the expo. He says, your reality is reflex, reflection of your state of mind. And it's a reflection. So if you're looking in the mirror and the guy in the mirror is not smiling, you don't go up to the mirror and try to change right. the look. You have to emanate it within right. and then the exterior does change. You can mm -hmm. change your reality by changing your feelings about who you are. And William James said that in the 1890s. He said... Oh, you, the year I was born. No, it's kidding. There you go. <laughs> You've been around a while. I know, right? <laughs> no, but, I, I, you know, this is um, the potential we have. Yeah, we're going through hard times in the planet, country, climate, but we don't need to get depressed about it. We need to take action. And mm. the action starts with our own evolution, our own feeling. You know, if everyone's just sitting around depressed, taking CBD oil, where would <laughs> I think they are? But where would we be right. then? You're in California, so probably that's true. right. It's, it, that's right. But it's not getting them anywhere. Yeah. It's actually, I think, part. I mean, people don't won't like this, but I think the whole marijuana thing was to keep people dull, <laughs> to dull them down. And I, it was I a, totally agree. It was a government plot to do yeah. that to stop the revolutionaries of the '60s. Let's right. give them marijuana. Everyone thought that was such a revolutionary thing, and it was part of the trap. Mm. I mean, I'm not a big conspiracy person. That's just a kind of I, we are here. Truth be told, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> truth be told, <laughs> I think the more you, with your own consciousness, whatever state you're in, and and work on the interior without yeah. uh, substances, the more free you'll become. And I, I'm a person, I love change. I love, yeah. I think that's what keeps me going, is knowing there's something else. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I, I, again, I'm, I'm not a person, I don't even take an aspirin. Right. <laughs> me neither. I don't. If I get a headache, I just let it go until it's gone. That's right. And yeah. if people are depressed, you don't have to take antidepressive. You let it go until it's gone. Right. You go into it and see what it's about. Mm -hmm. And then as you go into those places, not to deny your feelings, right. it's to investigate them. It'll free you. Our natural state is joy. Right. So anything that's in the way, it's like an injury. You, your body will heal it if you mm. let it. So mm, I love that. And real quick before we yes, before our sure. time is up, I want to I want to touch a little bit because this is truth be told, and we do like to talk about UFOs. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. Please. Um, so when we were talking about angels and even mm -hmm. in uh, a aliens, because as we know, there's multiple different types of aliens. So I'm assuming they're just like human beings. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different, uh, yeah. different uh, uh, energy and different uh, point in their lifespan yeah. that they that there are. So, what do you feel aliens are? Because I hear about oh, they're here to protect us. They're here to watch over us. They're here to keep us from destroying ourselves. But then also you would think they would reveal themselves so we can go, oh, you know, well, they're here to... <laughs> you know, there's lots... Yeah, go yeah, ahead. No, there's lots of types of aliens and all that, but I think what I'm getting lately, it's really a state of consciousness. We have an alien con uh, understanding. We right. haven't... But who these beings really are, mm -hmm. we have no idea about because we don't have a language 
to put them in. We call something a UFO. We call something unidentified, and we think we identify it because we call it unidentified. Right. We don't know what these things are or who these beings are because we haven't opened up the consciousness to allow their telepathy right. into our... Some people are, and it is an evolution. So the more we expand our awareness of what consciousness is... Right the more downloads we'll get and the more interaction with these beings. We have to open up a whole other way of seeing the universe, of feeling, of trusting our minds. You see, we've been taught in psychology about that not to trust our minds. But if you're getting a, a, a telepathic message, trust that. You're not crazy. Most mm -hmm. Some people are, but most people <laughs> aren't. Why'd you look at me extra long? That's okay. <laughs> but, but no, we have to start to trust our own psychology and start to be able to receive. This is a receiver you have there on top of your shoulders there. Right. It's a receiver and a sender. And we're starting to receive a different frequency. And this is what the aliens, I think, are trying to show us. Mm -hmm. It's all in thought. It's a new frequency of thought. They're trying mm -hmm. to teach us their language. If you're talking to a dog, you're not going to bark at them, are you? No, you're going to speak in the language of the higher intelligence. Right. This is the language they're talking to us in vibration, feeling, telepathy, and a greater understanding. You, does that make sense? So yes. we don't have the words necessarily, right. but we're getting the first wave of feeling sense, mm -hmm. and that will be coded into a new cognition. Oh, yeah. So we have to trust what's coming in. If enough of us come together and start to share our experiences, right. I just had an ET roundtable in New York the other day. Oh, cool. Then we can start to put together the pieces of the puzzle and start to create a new culture that will welcome the other. Right now, we're afraid of the other. We're building walls to keep others out. Right. <laughs> but that's not the idea. We have to open the borders of our mind so we allow new thoughts, so we can allow a new language and a new culture to sweep through humanity so we can meet the other mm. on their ground. They're not coming down to our level. They're already at a higher vibration, right? Right? You're not going back to kindergarten after you've graduated. Well, <laughs> right. well you maybe you. I, I don't in, know. But <laughs> I was in kindergarten for a while. So well, no. <laughs> anyway, but you, do you know what I'm saying? It's a different way of thinking, and yeah. this is what the ETs represent in this wave that's coming to the right. planet, a new way of thinking. And it's unknown, and we're just becoming familiar with that territory. And it might take 100 years to do that. Or right. longer, or, or less. Long, and it's already been going on. Yeah, I mean, for thousands of years. So, But, but we have to trust our own minds, you know, ideas of channeling and non-local right. consciousness, out-of-body, near-death. This is all a matter of the fact that your consciousness is not just in your body, but it's transpersonal. So the ETs exist as frequencies. We have to open this receiver to receive more of the higher frequencies. And then we'll have more open contact. I mean, yeah, they're coming and going on this earth plane to plant the seeds of possibility. Mm -hmm. We have to go there and we have to not be able to be laughed at when you say you've seen an ET or met an ET or got a telepathic download or seen a UFO. Right. We have to expand our worldview. I mean, talking about the mainstream, truth right. be told. Right. That's out there that doesn't even want to know the truth because they're happy with their so little corner of reality. And, you know, they're sitting in front of their television and that, that's all they care about. Maybe that's they'll, true. Maybe they'll true. watch a program, but mostly it will disturb people if they know something else is out there. And that's what we need to do is disturb them because <laughs> truth be told, there's a greater reality coming that's going to oh, be yeah. great for all of us. But, I, think. I mean, if you think about it, though, and before we yeah. close here, you have to, I mean, you think about and 30 years ago, if you said you saw a UFO, people did look at you. Mm -hmm. Like you were crazy. Or if you said you did yoga or had a massage yeah, right. or, you know, went to a health food restaurant, they right. would look at you the same way. Right. But this is the evolution of culture. The UFO ET situation is the next evolution of our culture. It's the next coming out right. of liberation. You know, there are all these great movements, black, women, gay, all that. This is even farther out than all this because this is a state of mind. That is a real revolution for humanity. And you know what? The irony of ETs and their visitation it makes us more human. Oh, it makes us, that. it gives our, us a greater ability to feel who we are in this incarnational right. form. That's beautiful. There we are. And that's why we have Alan.
Thank on you. the show today. <laughs> and this uh, oh, weekend, uh, tomorrow, a copy of Ancient Civilizations, mm-hmm. Keys to Ascension. Right. Uh, and you're going to be working with Dr. J.J. and Desiree Hertog. Those guys are real masters. They, J- yeah. J.J. had a real Ascension experience. He's one of the few people on the planet that was taken up with his body to the next level of consciousness. Yeah, just like you, you could sit back and just cross your arms and cross your legs and just enjoy the show because <laughs> you, you all know, know have have worked in this not only just field but work walk the walk because you you really know this stuff well i try to live it you know i have yeah. my uh moments where the guy cuts you off in traffic you just yell at them uh, you <laughs> know but you know it's all the challenge but we're here to help lift up each other and that's the most exciting thing here real quick so. we have one question from sure, the sure, chat sure. room it says do psychology believe in palladian or alien therapy do psychologists believe That's in that? Depends what psychologist it is. You know, Jungians might. I mean, psychology is multifaceted, and we're graduating into a more spiritual psychology that includes those other realms. Psychology, as it was developed by Freud, was very limited. Freud himself said life was created from inanimate objects. Right. <laughs> and he said people have a death wish to go back into inanimate forms. He didn't believe anything spiritual. That was his break with Jung. Mm. Jung said, no, there's a greater consciousness. And this is the psycho. We're moving into a psychology that includes not non- non-local consciousness, mm-hmm. which will be a greater understanding of that. I mean, people like James Hillman were open right. to that, and there's many great new type. Paul Levy is a great new psychologist. There's so many right. people pushing the envelope of what psychology can be. It includes those. I mean, psychology has helped us get over our personal oh, problems. Yeah, of course, but, but it's also put a limit on us. And now we're expanding those limits to include this spiritual understanding of our soul's essence and look at it from a multi-level point of view, multi-dimensional. And I think psychology and religion, traditional psychology mm-hmm. and religion, were very similar as in limiting us yeah. mindfully. I mean, psychology was the next level after religion, right. but now we have to go beyond those right. limits. It helped us. It's like climbing a ladder. When you get right. to the next rung, you have to let go of the rung below us. So we're evolving through that until we can get to that place of ascending the body through the ancient technology that the great ones left behind. All right, so tell everybody where you can, uh, where they can find you and then... Tell them about what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow at the Conscious Living Expo at the uh, LAX Hilton at 6 p.m. I'll be speaking with the doctors, her talk, and we'll be talking about this ancient civilizations as they left markers to changing the frequencies of our bodies so we can finally graduate from the earth realm and become the great gods we were always meant to be. So it's a very exciting come to the Hilton tomorrow and experience what's possible with ETs. ETs are reality, and they're waiting for us to grow up. They're not going to save <laughs> us from ourselves. We have right. to save, do it ourselves. So we have some challenges ahead, but it's all exciting, and it's all part of a great awakening. That It's kind of like, like parents letting their children writing a bad check and going, you got to earn that money to pay it back. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, but thank you so much. You're always amazing when you come on the show. We love having you here. So please come back. Again. Well, you know, you inspire me. I had no idea what I was going to say. I didn't even know I knew all that until you asked. I know. Questions. I was like, well, I'm just after I, throwing that question. I don't even know me, where so. that came from. You're, you're an inspiration, Tony. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Alan Steinfeld. Everybody, go to new reali- newrealities.com and check out his website uh, and pu- my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash yes. newrealities. 18 million views. Because I've, oh I've been doing it God. since YouTube began. This girlfriend I had said, what are you shooting all those videos for? I said, I don't know. And then she says, you know what? There's a place you can put them. In 2006, right? when Because wow. I was doing a cable show in Manhattan. Yeah. And I said, what am I going to do with all And then there's this place. So, so you're build the pioneer, it and they will come. YouTube pioneer? That's right. They will come. Build that field. Well, congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, you. I enjoy hanging out here with you. Let's oh, do come back anytime, okay. please. Okay. And, and you know where I'm, you, you found me. This I did. So I, you, you were hiding and behind the green screen. <laughs> that's but right. thank that's not green screen. That's real. <laughs> well, that's right. right but, well, thank, thank Michael and Lori for helping to create this. Of course. Yeah. And we do thank Michael and Lori and Captain Ron. So for Captain Ron and Tony Sweet on Truth Be Told, Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on our channel, YouTube. Don't don't forget to subscribe to both of us. Yes. Yes. YouTube.com slash new realities. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Bye. Bye.